Isn't that feeling incredible? That's not a feeling fun. That's Holy Spirit that worked this morning. I want you to know that's Holy Spirit that worked. So you are so welcome here. Uh, we are glad that you made the decision to come to Christ. Jen, uh, you're going to walk out here differently than you walked in. And that's lovely. Okay, as you have to go out here, I don't know. That maybe. Maybe the Lord worked this morning. But something in you is going to be different. Um, and before I begin, I would like to, I, I would actually love to thank our lead pastors uh, for giving me the opportunity to, you know, to minister the word. Um, it says something about a leader, I always say that, that they entrust the leaders they built up to bring the word in the house of the Lord. So, Pastor Mandy, Jackie, thank you so much. It's always a privilege. And um, thank you for your words. That's what I'm talking about. You can hear my words. It's out of the word. It's out of the word. In your potential. That's my theme for today. Your potential. Your potential. You actually got the potential to do anything you want to. You've got the potential. If somebody speaks negative with you about something, you've got the potential to go with them on that path. Or you've got the potential to stop them and say, no, nah, rather, rather not speak about that person. You've got the potential to do anything. But there's something inside of you that the Lord placed that will take us forward in life. That will give us an enjoyable life. And net voor ek aan begin, wil ek julle graag een story vertel of a potential. So, a few years back, uh, so we went to a lion park. Ek nie lion park sy naam sê nie. Maar net nog geil in die gang nie, na my story. Maar dit is an awesome experience, is rescue lions and, I don't know what a rescue lion looks like. Hulle gaan jy nog steeds kom eet as jy nabe is. Ne? So, we, so, so, we made the decision to go to the lion's lounge. I mean, he's not in my lounge, but now I want to go lounge. To gaan. Not, but I'm nervous, obviously. I was a bit forsichtig. So when we stopped at that farm, um, now I'm out of the car. Uit, and I can already hear them. I don't know if you're a neighbor, Leo, was he. It's something that's terrible. That they, 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 was it in my mouth or was it in my mouth or was it in my mouth or was it in my mouth? And I'm not stupid, I know what he's saying. I'm saying, I'm hungry. <laughs> ek bly net honger. <laughs> now I'm going to go in. Gaan, eh? Now, okay, now I go in. I mean, ek, ek ek natural wild. Ek my nie goed is so. Ek my dit is, kss, 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 krap in. So I came in there, so groot as die dak. Eh? Die goed daar loop so rond. And, and if you enter the farm, they look at you immediately. Soos wat ons vir een skaapchoppie sou kyk, wat van die vier afkom. I'm gonna eat you now. <laughs> yeah. Nou kyk eens so, nou weet, nou weet ek wat om dit, nou kyk ek maar terug. So, um, ek weet nie wat die challenge is. Nou, nou be, 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 before I went in, I, nou, nou, nou kry ek een prentje vir my, obviously the, die heinings is hoog, and there's another duck over the heining, and dit is soos gesekeer man, dit is soos gesekeer. Nou kom ek al, Heining is so hoog soos die meer. And there's no duck over the heining. And we are eyeballing each other like. Nou, nou traai ek vir die geliew sê, ek is a thai vlees, jy hou nie vir my nie, ek is thai. Ek is hier gesout nie, maar die leeuw net soos, hungry, kan uit. Now, now I must call myself because now, now, now kreek die gids. The, the man who is lekker wind gaat, hy loop lekker wind gaat ronde al. Nou sê ek vir hom, bro, kam jy. Ek sê, but, this fence is not as high as I thought. And I oh, said for my knee, I weet. <laughs> Wrong answer, but it's just... Now, I know. Okay, now I'm no more nervous. But now I'm going to go up and up. Because I'm excited to rock for me. And for all the other stakes that are on the yeah? Now I'm asking the tour guide, listen, your brother, can that lie? And because, I mean, is this a roy cut? Daar is thousands of jaguars ook al binnen. Hulle het omgevind. Hy is ook al binnen. Die leeuws is al binnen. En, en, nou, nou, nou vraag, Peru, kan, um, kan, kan die man een oorspring? Net een vraag. Oh, nou, for sure. Bro, uh, what? For sure, what is it? This is, why is everybody so calm? Uh, nou, nou, weet ek nie wat hem te doen he. Nou, vraag net vir hom, nou, I want to ask him, but why don't I? Maar nou, ek soos, ek is bang vir die antwoord. Now I get all my guts, man. I get all my mouth and said, give me your hand, I get it. I love you and all that stuff. 
Want hier gaat ik om die jaren van aangezicht tot aangezicht te zien. Maar anyways, jokes nee. Um, nou vraag ik voor hem, oké, okay, waarom? No, ik trek maar vleister, because there's other people as well. Why don't they jump over the fence? And he said to me, a cat works so. Because a lion is a cat. Die, die wil nie gewet het he, but a huge cat. They say, a cat is altijd maar so so. Have you seen that video? So, unless he has a leeuw that I do, it's a, over a tons force that he will hit you with. Oh my word, no. no. Sigma, but why don't they jump? A cat comes to the wall, to an object, whatever it is, comes in front of it, looks up, okay, it's clear. Then they jump easily over. Now, can I give you one story? But, now, boor die fence, boor die heining, is daar sikker so breed soos dit, is daar een nog heining wat net so oor hang, na hulle kant toe. So what happens, the cat, or the movies a cat, like a stuff, eh? kyk so, and he sees there's something above him, he can't jump over, so, okay, no, that's cool, Let, let's go on. That's why the cat doesn't jump over. I want to ask you this morning, so my vroeg vroeg, what happened in your life? What did people say about your life that you believe you cannot jump over the fence? B because actually you can jump over the fence. You've got the potential to jump over, but what is that one lie of iets wat iemand jou gesê het, wat hierdie kling dingetje net so boeie hou en, no, I can't do it, I can't do it. I want you to think about that because you have the potential to do anything. You have the potential to jump over the fence. Now, your potential klink soos a YouTube motivational video. Iemand gaan motivate. I'm not here to motivate you guys. I'm not a motivational speaker. But if I had to be a motivational speaker, it would sound something like this. <coughs> Self-discipline is not to say no for a chocolate. Self-discipline is if when your alarm goes off, you stand up out of bed and silence that alarm. The first thing you need to do before you walk out your house is to make up your bed. Because that's the first accomplishment, the first achievement of the day. If your wife or husband is still laying in bed, kick them out. Because success is better than sleeping late. I want to tell you, winners don't need motivation. Winners need discipline. You don't eat your food to taste it. You eat your food to function. You don't cook your chicken breast in salt. You eat your chicken breast to get in your protein. I want to tell you not how many times you fall down, it's how many times you stand up and keep moving forward. Because pain is temporary, but victory lasts forever. I want to tell you, you never say no unless somebody asks you, have you had enough? No, I haven't had enough. It's a glory. That's what, actually a motivational speaker, you guys, is a belief. So that's what, if we had to be a motivational, done. So, let's say, online, stand up, and gaan draf. <laughs> if you're laying in bed. Yeah, you're welcome here. Guys, don't, don't kick your wife and husband out of bed. That's a belief. That was not to say, moet nie dit doen nie, laat hulle net lekker is. If you do it, I could say no, feel a moe nie, waar? Seriously, that was just a joke. But make up your bed. Because that's the first accomplishment. No lies, you feel you accomplish something and mark veel lust van nog. Okay, but leave your wife as a belief. Dit sal nooit vergewe word nie. Dan moet ons vir jou vergiefenis preek en die goed, en wie dan? Ons het dit gedoen, ons het dit gedoen. Ja. Ja, ek krijg soms warm. Ek sal nou over die jog gaan. But I want to help you this morning to read. I'm going to talk straight out of the word. I, 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 as ek weer motivational speech wil geer, dan kom nou maar huis toe, dan, dan, dan jaag ek jou rond en ons kan lekker chat. But I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to talk straight out of the word uh, this morning. And I, and I want to help you read your potential. Because so many times the school I work at, I see all the potentials that the kids have. But it's just be there. It's, it's just it. They don't use it. And I get frustrated because there's something big in each and every teenager. But rather to use the potential to do good, they use the potential they have to do the opposite and to do bad. 
and go with other stuff. So I've got a real passion for to use your potential. And um, I want to start you guys by telling that the devil, the enemy, whatever you call him, knows your potential. He knows your potential. He wordt die omkant gevang as a your potential. He knows that. Why do you think the attacks come? Why do you think death comes over your family? By the family member. Anfallen van vrienden. Your bestest friend um, met jou verraai. Why do you think happens? That's attacks from the devil to keep you away from your potential. Because he knows if you reach your potential, he's in trouble. That's why stuff happened to us. Because we have something inside. Each and every one has something inside of you that is big. And um, he wants to empty you. And he tempts you. God doesn't tempt. He doesn't play games because he cannot be tempted. It's the devil that tempts you to get you off your potential. But the flip side of the coin, God has created your potential and he imparted it in your heart. So that's the truth. You've got it. You have a lot of potential. You have a potential to open you that is om uit te come. But the devil will always say the opposite of what is the truth. Do you guys agree with me? He will always say, I'll take you back to the, one of the first scriptures of the Bible, Genesis 3, verse 3. And Eve and, and the slung, the snake, the serpent, I say. And this is in a rebekabel, what, what, and how, and, and Eve said to the serpent, God said, you shall not eat from it, nor touch it the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Otherwise, you will die. But the serpent said to the woman, yeah, you shall surely not die. Can you guys see what the devil does? He will even, he will attack you on the things you know and the things that were taught to you. And he will attack you on the truth and say the opposite, surely you will not die. And we all know the story, they ate of the fruit, and spiritually, they died and they separated themselves from God. But I want to bring it more close to uh, a scripture that's more familiar. And it is Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay for him. The hiding is over your eyes. Of you the dark book with Jeremiah. Um, this is what we all know that. And it says there, For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well being. And not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Hy is a belofte vir julle van God af. En ons al so baie gehoor, ne, that it's possible that we got used to that scripture. I want to tell you, the moment you get used to a scripture, you should read it again with more intent. Because there's much more in the scripture than you that read it a thousand times. God can give another revelation to you. But just check that, for I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you. The devil also knows the plans and thought he has for you. That's for destruction. Plans for peace and well-being. The devil's plans for you is for destruction, disruption, die not well-being, sickness. That's his plan for you. And not for disaster. But the devil says, I want to bring disaster in your life. And to give you a future and a hope. The, the generation that's coming is not a futureless generation as it word is. They've got a future. It's not a hopeless generation. They've got hope. But what the devil does, he shows you what in the world, what gaan aangaan en sê, oh, hierdie kinders in die land het nie a future. Jy moet maar, if, the, if you hear something that brings death, you take it to the opposite and you know what God tells about you about that situation. You have a future. You have hope. You are not hopeless. There is something big inside of you waiting to come out. But you need, you need to take it. Jesus gives life to prosper and to excel you in life. But the devil brings death to harm you and to make you fail. That is main point. He wants to harm you and he wants to see you fail. But, um, but you've got something inside of you that Jesus can use to, to excel you. Just a few things, four things that steals and takes away your potential immediately. The first one is worldly views. The world is like the waves in the ocean. Here it can't do. There it can't do. Then it comes, then it's high tide, then it's low tide. 
then the waves is big, then it's, it's not secure. It's, and if you're going to follow the patterns of the world and what the world says, you are going to just go like this, the waves, and you're going to go this way, you're going to go that way, you're going to go The world makes things right that is not right. The world makes things seem to be this is the truth, but it's not the truth at all. But the only way you will see that and see the lie if you spend time in the Word. If you don't spend time in the Word and you're just around, you're going to believe them. I can, I can become a girl. I'm, I'm, I'm born a boy. But I think I'm a girl. Or I'm a girl and I'm born a boy. God made you a certain gender because in that certain gender you have potential in you to change circumstances. If you think it's the right thing to change it, you lose your potential to have a good life. It's not the will of God. It's not the will of God. But if you go through the world, you'll see, okay, no, I get accepted in that, so let's go there. And a few years, you're not accepted anymore. Okay, let's go out again. You're going to go like the waves of the ocean. Maybe you say you are a realist. Yeah, that's good to be a realist. It's a gift from God to be a realist. But you need to channel your realist gift to say, listen, there's some times that I need to trust in God and not try to figure it out. Because the world wants to figure it out. And if they can't figure it out, they make it up and make you believe what they made up. But if you're in the word, you know. If you are a faith walker, that's a gift of God. But you need to channel that because God gave you common sense as well. Don't do that. God gave us common sense. It's stupid fool, but God gave you common sense. You need to channel your life you are living and not go according to the worldly views. A familiar story in the Bible where Jesus walked on the water in uh, Matthew 14. It says, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, Israelites, on the, on the boat in the rocky sea, the storm, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost. Roar, they said, and cried out in fear. Now, this, the year is on Aaron's geschreven that I now can see, but I... I want to suggest maybe this happened. One Israelite looked over and said, Oh, yes. That looks like a lot. He said, and shouts out, There's a ghost. All the disciples hear him. You, yes, ghost. And they went crazy. There's a ghost. I wonder if one disciple said, I recognize that man. That's Jesus. And would they all follow him? Yes, that is Jesus. I can see him walking. He's coming on the water. It's a miracle. Don't walk the path of the world because you would shout stuff that's not even true. That's a story where the people start it. In group gaan so. We want equal rights. We want this equal rights. And okay, now, hello, equal rights. The next group following them because they live also together with us. They start now. They here, we want electric lights. And they go, we want electric lights. And in the whole group, they say, yeah, we want electric lights. This is, come on, let's go. Volgende group come, they say, check it out, we want to go together. They say, we want beacon bites. Yeah, that's not nice. That's not nice. We want beacon bites. They just fall in a world that, what, they don't know what they're saying. Beacon bites. I want to encourage you, mate, but you don't follow the, the, the worldly views. Because that's lies. You can go scream what you have never so scream as you alone was. But because of the world, you want to feel accepted. You can't say this because they will not accept you. Don't say that because it's, it's against what... If you speak the word of God, that's the truth. And the truth will set you free. That's the thing. So don't go according to the worldly views. If you say, maybe you're saying, I'm just, I'm just here on earth, enjoy my life. Whatever happens must happen. Okay, we are, let's do it. The, the world will sort himself out. Just check out this next sentence on the board. And it says, if you stand for nothing, you will fall for everything. If you stand for nothing, you'll believe everything they say and you will fall for it. 
and you will fall for it. But if you stand for the word of God, you will not fall for everything because you know where your rock is and where your foundation is. I want to encourage you, don't follow the worldly views. There's something inside of you. God created you for you, not to be somebody else. Otherwise, he would create you as somebody else. He created you for you and there's potential in you. The next one, the next one is fear. And um, fear is the absence of faith. You can't have both in you. If you have fear, your faith disappears. But if you have faith in your heart, your fear disappears. Fear not, that sentence, fear not, that two words, is mentioned in the Bible 365 times. That is a fear not for each day you live. That's a promise for each day. That's grace for each day. Fear not. When you fail today, tomorrow, there's another chance. God doesn't give second chances, third chances. He gives another chance. And he doesn't count. He gives another chance. Fear not, my child. Fear not. I'm here with you. We must try to get rid of that fear in our hearts. And, um, and, and, and another famous scripture, Isaiah 41.10 it says, God uh, says to us, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. That is who we are. That's your potential. You, you don't have to fear. God is there with his right hand. If you're left-handed, then God is there left-handed for you. But God is there with his strong hand to uplift you wherever you go. As you were very stressed, don't fear God already done it. He is already half a bay. Just have faith in him. Want hy hoef jou so vast in jou in sy hand and he just take you over the circum. You can see what's happening. You experience everything but he takes you over the stuff above and puts you down on the other side. Fear not. I want to promise you fear not for God is here. But fear will take some of your potential away because then you don't focus as well. God honors courage. He knows where you are. He weet waar vir hafend aankom. He weet waarmee jy sukkel. He weet waar jy op pad is. And he, and, and he knows that fear might just come up. But he honors courage when you say, God, I believe in you. I'm going to take courage. I'm going to read my word, although it's very difficult. I'm going to speak positivity, although it's very difficult. I'm going to move, although it's very difficult. God honors that courage. And he will reward you for that. For if you are bold, and courageous, you activate your faith, and in essence, you activate your potential. Because if your faith is activated, your potential comes forth, and you can live in what God called you for. The next one, third one, what steals your potential is lies. The devil is a liar with his pants on fire. Amper motivate ek julle weer met iets, en relax. But the devil is a liar. You guys know it, but I want you guys to, to know it. The devil is a liar. He will attack you with a lie. He will send friends over your life to lie to you. He will send family over your life to lie to you. He will send that good colleague that has your back to lie to you. He will send your closest close friend to lie to you. And most probably they don't even know they're lying to you. But the devil, he want to catch you with a lie. And any lie that comes over your path like you cannot do it, you say the opposite to yourself. That you can do it. Because you cannot do it brings death if you say it. But if you can do it, it brings life. So you need to tell yourself, I can't do it. And you know, okay, the devil is lying now. Lord, I know I can do it. And you walk with that. You activate your faith in that. Don't listen to people if they tell you, you're too young to do it. You're not too young. The same spirit that was in Moses is in me as well. I'm not too young. You're not too young. Don't listen to people who say, you're too old. You're too old to begin a new job. You're too old to begin over. That's a lie from the devil. You are the right age to start over. And God can use it like never before. Don't let people tell you, you're too old. That brings death. You are not going through a midlife crisis. Koop hy Harley Davidson, vanmiddag. Koop hy ding. Gaan koop hy daadpoort. Gaan koop hy surfboot. In the wetsuit. Gaan surf man. Is that a midlife crisis? 
Get a joke net. We're with the joke now. What? Ladies, I'm joking with the Ali. Nee, ik weet ook niet. Nee, baie Ali, man, dit is lekker. Pas, jy mag. Koopie Ali. To geef haar al lift. <laughs> lekker. Sonne helmet. Nee, ek joke. Nee, daar vat ek weer te ver. Nee, 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 nee. nee. Hey, helmet. A lie will make you believe something that is not true at all. I mean, if you... I can... I can... Ek kan vir oortuig die licht is pink. En as jy vir my gaan luister... En ek maak het mooi, want het is Valentine's Day vandag. Don't believe me, the lich is pink, but it's seriously it's blue. Okay? Anything in your life, they will lie to you. The lie will come so scaly that you will start believing it. But if you are in the word, you know what is a lie and not a lie. Proverbs 14 says, An honest witness does not deceive, but a false witness pours out lies. If somebody's in your presence, if somebody's in your circle, in your life, and they don't deceive you, you know that person may stay in my life because it's a life-giving person. But if you hear somebody gossip around you, talking stuff about other people, lying to you, want to break you down, you know that's a false witness that wants to bring you down. They will, that they will want to use false witness to take away your potential. Because if you haven't had any potential, the devil is not as you know, it's not in the for me. But because there's something in each and every one of us, the devil wants to steal that. But we know the truth. Listen to this lie about Jesus. I don't know how many people have read it. In Matthew 28, now the woman had now seen, uh, Maria Martha had seen, Jesus had opgestaan, he had himself revealed, he had the gods had seen, he had very good things happen, that he had the tomb, the tomb stone is weggerolled al. And it goes so, while the women were on their way, some of the gods, what now seen it, went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. They saw everything. When the chief priest had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money telling them, like we know you saw that stuff, but you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed, telling that they stole Jesus. He hasn't risen. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. That one lie about people saying, no, whoa, you saw that. Oh, man, we are wrong. But you say the people came and stole them. Watch out what you say that doesn't bring life because that can go generations on and generations on and gener. Watch out what you believe because you can put it on for generations. Your children's children, you can put. Listen to the word of God. There's no lies in this word. There's only truth. I wonder what would have happened if the soldier said, "No way, you can keep your money." I mean, we will die, but we saw that we saw and we believe that Jesus has risen. But because of a lie, it took away the potential to, to evangelize and to spread the word of Jesus. The, the fourth one I want to share with you guys is laziness. Is it ekin, eh? Is it here what prat? Laziness. Listen to what the word of God says about laziness. Because laziness is a real thing. You can get so lazy that you feel you're active. Dan sê moeg hulle. Jy is moeg gesê, ek gaan nou begin. Nee, ek is moeg, ek gaan nou slaap eers. Morgen gaan ek weer begin. Hulle weer daar. Ek gaan nou begin. Ek gaan slaap hier nou maar weer, want jy gaan morgen weer. Laziness is a true thing. I'm not talking about you take a break en jy sit by Netflix vir die naweek en jy leen kyk movie because you can. If you can do it, do it. I can remember, I was... I almost felt I was burned out for a time in this last month. I canceled my coaching at a gym. I canceled all plans. It was like a coat work. You landi, he took a lekker gevoel. So I said, you and I in the bed the whole day. So three o'clock, we were in the bed. Two movies gekyk, is my high school so far. Two movies na mekaar gekyk. We just lay down, get food in the bed. Moe nie nie bed eet, dit is lelik man. Sit by tafel, but we in the bed. Lekker geëet so. 
relax, sê nie oe of aan nie, net nou en dan, is jy nog wakker? Ja. <laughs> That's all you say, ek sê nie baie veel nie. I promise you the next morning, a new, a new excitement in me, and then a new energy, because I rested. Laziness isn't rest. Laziness is lay man. But <laughs> Proverbs 6, Proverbs 6 says, hey, listen to this, go to the ant, you sluggard. That is like a raggedy, but that sluggard is not something bad, it's just you lazy person. Eh? Consider its ways and be wise. Go to the ant. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores it pro- its provisions in the summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? Now check it, this is my favorite part ever. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. You've got something in you. People prophesied over your life. You receive promises in the word. You are excited. Good church service. Jy is reg om te begin. But if you're just going to sit and lie there, that's, 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 that's what's going to happen. And before you wipe away, you are in a dark hole. And you need to get out of that. And I want to tell you, if you only go to God in tough times, when things get tough, I want to suggest that you will always be angry with God in tough times. Because if you go to God every time and you have a relationship and you know the Father's heart and you have a close relationship, if you go through tough times, you know, my Father's going to get me through this. I will keep on moving. I will keep on believing. I will keep on reading my word. Although it's tough, I'm not angry because I know this is the devil wants to attack me. I'm going to attack back with the word. I'm going to pray, although it's so hard to pray, but I will not be angry with God because that's not the Father's heart, what I'm going through. Whatever you're going through, that's not the Father's heart. That's the devil that he wants to steal. The devil wants you to believe, God, that's why God is doing this now. You didn't read Bible last week, that's why, that, that's what happens. As you don't have to do it, you don't have to do it. But that's not the Father's heart. You need to serve God and have a relationship with Him And in tough times, you'll be even stronger. Because Paul says, in my weakness, in my weakness, I am strong. So I want to encourage you, you serve God completely and with a whole heart. But I just don't want to say what steals your potential. I want to say what enhances your potential. And the first one is, if you have godly views, that will enhance your, it's the opposite of worldly views. There's no in-between views. Daar is nie een Meisenberg view, of a sea view, of a sea mew nie. It's, it's godly views. And listen to this story in John 4. The royal officer said, they, come to, they came to Jesus while Jesus was walking, Sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. And the man took Jesus at his word and departed. And his son lived. He knew that when Jesus said, your son will live, I can take you by your word, my son will live. And he went back. He didn't say, Jesus, I don't think you know, and, and, and you need to come with me. Laying on our hands, please. Just, Jesus said, go, your son will not die. He will live. And he took him by his word. If you have a godly view, whatever happens in your life, you'll know that God can make everything out for the good for you. Everything. You can go with his word, and although it's tough, and although you can't see the end, you know that God's word says, I will bring everything for the good, for those who love me. We just have to follow in his paths. There's only a f- two commandments that Jesus gives us to do. The first one is uh, in Matthew 22, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. That's easy. Just love God. And the second is, love your neighbor as yourself. That's the two things we need to do. But it's easy because he's done everything already. But I want to tell you, if you don't love God with your whole heart, with your whole soul, and your whole mind, you won't understand certain stuff. 
because you won't understand the Father's heart. And if you don't love your neighbor as yourself, if you don't love yourself, you won't be able to give love to others. You might think you give love, but you give another love. Maybe you should forgive yourself. Maybe you should accept yourself. And maybe you start loving yourself. Because if you can do that, your potential comes up in your heart and you can encourage other people. Kick yourself in his mirror and say, yeah, you like a ding. As you can know, fat papa. Then it's the for a dancey. You only say it to the mirror. Don't say it to other people that, and to your wife. Actually, bye if you landy. You land, what, where was you landy? Okay, so, thank you. I love her. She's, she's the best thing ever happened to me. You know a wife, ne? I'm not the half the man I am today without you, Landy, in my life. She just encourages me. She gives me the tap on the back whenever I need it at the right time. She prays for me. So husband, moet nie gemakkelijk raak met jou wife, of moet nie gewoond raak in haar nie. Wees gemakkelijk, moet nie gewoond raak in haar nie. Because that's a piece of treasure. Hy is a YouTube advertentie gehoor vannacht daar in, dis nou voorbij. Dis nou, hy kom en gaan ons net so, jy vraag nie vir my. Jy kan ook in my ad skip nie, jy moet luister wat ek vir jou sê. <laughs> Love your wife. Woo! Ja, oké. Ja. Hier so kreeg ek so my warm hier so voor. Is goed. Once you are comfortable with yourself, you can start living. That's the truth. Once you're comfortable with yourself, you can start living. The second thing that enhances your, um, your potential is faith. That's the opposite of fear. It's faith. So, an incredible scripture, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Whoever believes in him. If you believe in God, if you believe in Jesus and he's part of your life, you're going to have a good life. You're going to have joy, although you mustn't have joy according to stats and according to what's happening. You're going to have joy. You're going to have peace, although the, the sea is rough. You're going to have peace. You, you, you don't know how and why. There's unbeschrijflijke vrede wat you krijg. That's just the Holy Spirit that can give you that if you believe in Him. Your, your faith at, you know, answers everything. There's a story about Maria and Martha that when their brother Lazarus died, um, Martha came to Jesus and she woke him up. They, she said to him, Lord, Lord, if you have been here, this was no four days late according to the world. If you have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus looked at him and said, your brother will not die. You will live again. But something else happened when Maria came out and saw Je- when she heard Jesus is on her way, on his way, he, she went to them on her knees at his feet, worshiping and say, Lord, if you just had been here, my brother would have lived. And something shifted in Jesus' heart and he said, show me where he is. I want to tell you, if you come with faith, and with everything inside of you, on your knees, worship, you are shifting God's heart. Faith shifts God's heart. Nothing else. Not, not your offering say, I must give it now. I it now. Lekker. But if you do that with faith, say, Lord, I cannot give this, but I praise you. I know you're going to provide for me. That shifts his heart. And he'll ask you, show me where I can provide for you. Let I provide for you. Something happens when you go on your knees and you worship God. Your faith activates God's heart. If you believe you can do all things, your faith will kick in and your potential will kick in. The third one um, is truth instead of lies. Hier land ek nou van jou gepraat. Ek is lief jou. Ek het gesek, lief jou. Nou kreeg al weer warm. Kom ons focus mens asblief, jylle focus hier. Truth. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Are you looking for a way out? Are you looking for the way you must walk? Go to Jesus because He's the way. And He'll show you the way. Do you, do you want truth? 
Do you want to know what's the truth? Is your koppel so muf? Do you want to know the truth? Go to Jesus. And he will tell you the truth. And he will show you the truth in his word. Do you want an enjoyable life? Do you want a new life? Are you sick of your old life? Do you want to get out of there? Go to Jesus. And he will give you a new life. A life abundant with hope, with a good future, well-being, no struggles. Go to Jesus and He will give you life. They say the truth is you won't raise enough money. The truth is you will raise enough money because God wants goodness for you. The truth is we're not going to make it. You're not The truth is, you are going to make it because the Lord is here. Seek the truth. The world doesn't have all the answers, but God has all the answers. The truth is that you are able. I want you to listen to me now. Think you are able. You are more than a conqueror. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. You no mistake. You're not here by accident and walk it out. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. You have purpose in this world. If it's not in the word, it's not the truth. And the last one that enhances your potential is to get up. That's it. It's it's to get up. You can hear all the sermons on a Sunday, people can prophesy over life, they can put promises, they can, you can read the word, but if you're going to sit and going to wait, nothing's going to happen. We need to get up and move it. Life's a journey. And I love to say it, but life's a journey, but in that journey, you, you need to move to enjoy the journey. There's no journey if you keep on sitting. If you drive to another place, the road trip is a journey. Stop biki here, stop biki there. But if you climb in your car and stay in the garage and say, Yara, I want to know where to come. Here, here sit, Papa. Your petrol is out idle. And you're going to smoor. And you're going to stink to petrol. You need to move to enjoy the journey. And I want to suggest to you something. The next scripture, your, uh, the, the next sentence, your potential means nothing if you keep on sitting you have it in you everything is in you but if you keep on sitting and wait for something your potential is not going to mean anything then you're wasting that to what you have I want to encourage you to get up and to move because your potential awaits that idea that you had a few years ago last month to begin a new business to do something go for it People told you you won't be able to do it or something happened or iemand het jou te nagekom, go for it. Because God planted that in you. That plan you people said you cannot do, you can't go for it. You will never know until you go for it. There might be failures, there might, but God's there to pick you up again and to show you. Someone broke your stride, someone broke your heart. Iemand het jou te nagekom in your squad. Release it. Stand up and go on. Go on with your life. God is with you. If you want a new beginning, let's stand up and do it. Because if you begin in faith, God will show His potential to you. Why don't you stand with a moment and I'm going to write, uh, read the last scripture to you guys. And I want to encourage you with this scripture. Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3. You know where you are. You most probably know your potential. You know what you can do. You know your gifts. I want to tell you, arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the world and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you and His glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the righteousness. To, to the brightness of your dawn. Rise and shine. 
You were made to shine. You're not made to put under a table so that nobody can see your light. You are made to shine. You can shine. So shine. I promise you, if you let God, He will take you to places. He will show you stuff. But you need to move. You need to get up and move. And the last slide I want to tell you, if you have godly views, if you focus on the Word, He will give you faith. He will give you the truth. And He will make you able to get up and to move, although it's difficult. That's only if you have godly views. Leave the world. Go upstream. Go upstream. The world, go upstream. A salmon goes upstream. In salmon is by lack of sushi. So just lack of upstream to go. So go upstream. People are going to tell you what you're doing. I've got the word of God in front of me. He's my light. I'm going to keep on going. Keep on. You're going to feel, you're going to feel they push you, they push you. But just keep on moving for he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. He's with you all the time. God honors boldness and courage. Take the courage and boldness. The prayer team can come to the front. And I want to invite you. If you want somebody to pray with you for your potential, what is your potential? You want to ignite it again? We just want to pray with you. And we want to help you enhance your potential and show the plan of God for you. And if you're here today and you want a new beginning, you have never given your life to Jesus, or maybe you've backslidden a bit and, you, and life got to you, God doesn't give second chances. He gives another chances, another chance, and another chance. It's never ending, another chance. So I want to give you the opportunity this morning just to get right with God. You can close your eyes with me, and we're all going to pray with you because we are together in this, and we want to help you. Just say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I need you in my life. I believe that you came to earth and died for my sins and rose from the grave sitting at the right hand of God praying for me, interceding for me, loving me, giving me new chances. Thank you for the potential in me. I pray that you would reveal it. And thank you for new chances and new beginnings. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, that is how simple it is. God didn't come to make it difficult. He came to make it easy for us. If you pray that this to this morning, 11 September, it's a new beginning for you. And we will invite you, if you need any prayer, come to the prayer team. We would just love to, uh, to pray with you and to trust God with you. For the rest of you, enjoy spur, panarotis, go to the beach, van is lekker. We love you.